The aim of this experiment is to draw the reverse characteristics of a Zener diode and hence to determine the breakdown voltage of the diode. The circuit is very similar to the semiconductor diode. Here you have the source circuit with a battery, a rheostat and a key. Here you need a battery or supply, DC supply of something higher than that of the semiconductor diode and its value would depend upon the breakdown voltage of this Zener diode. If the Zener is of 6 volt breakdown, then you can keep a supply of in the order of 9 or 12 volt. So this is a Zener diode. This is a real diode. You can see a black point or black ring over here. This is a negative terminal of the Zener diode that is the left hand side. So we will use this Zener diode onto the breadboard to make the circuit connections. This is a primary part consisting of the battery, rheostat and the key. These two terminals being the base of the rheostat. Now this is the next circuit. This is a variable head of the rheostat. You have to see to it that negative of the Zener diode is connected to the positive part so that the Zener is reverse biased. We are operating the Zener in the reverse bias. Now the positive of the Zener diode to the positive of the milliameter, the negative to a resistance. This can be a 100 ohm resistance or 120 ohm resistance. Then this is connected back to the baseline and to the base of the rheostat. So that this circuit is also complete. Now as a third part, we can connect a voltmeter parallel to this diode so that the voltage across the Zener diode can be measured. A meter will measure the current and voltmeter will measure you the voltage. When vary, by varying the rheostat position, we can measure V and the corresponding I. I have used a 9 volt battery box here. This is a positive terminal that to the rheostat base and the other rheostat base to the key and back to the negative terminal of the battery box. This is the variable head. I have taken a wire from that. Now coming to voltmeter, I have taken two wires from the voltmeter, two wires from the ammeter and this is my Zener diode circuit where I fixed the Zener diode onto the breadboard. So this part is done. Now we'll make this circuit starting from the variable head of the rheostat. So I have taken a wire from the variable head of the rheostat and I will connect it to the negative terminal or negative point of the Zener diode. Then from the positive side of the Zener diode, we will connect it to milliameter, positive terminal of the milliameter. Then the negative terminal of the milliameter should go to the resistance. So I'll keep it at a point here and introduce a resistance of 120 ohm over here. So the other end of the resistance should come to the baseline and to the base of the rheostat. So I'm using this wire from the base of the rheostat to this other end of the resistance. Now the circuit is almost done. Now we will have to connect this voltmeter across this Zener diode. So the positive of the voltmeter should go to this point and the negative of the voltmeter should go to this point that is across the same points as that of the Zener diode. So this is a Zener diode. These are the voltmeter wires. These are the voltmeter wires. From here starts the ammeter. Now the circuit is done and we will introduce the key. Now we will do the experiment part. The voltmeter and ammeter is reading initially zero. Now I will slowly increase the position of the rheostat so that the voltmeter in the, is increasing in voltage. You can see it. Observe this voltmeter and ammeter. The voltage is now nearly 2 volt. 
but the current is still zero. I'm increasing the voltage to say three volt. Still the current is zero. Now the voltage has reached up to four volt. And again, the milliameter has not reached one division. So I'll take it as zero. Now again, I'm increasing the voltage. Now the voltage is almost say 4.8 and I'm getting one division in the milliampere that is I can put it as 5 milliampere. Now I'm increasing the voltage again. It is increasing in current. Now it has almost reached 5 volt. 5 volt the current is say 20 milliampere. Four divisions that is 20 milliampere. Now I'm again increasing the voltage. Now the voltage in the voltmeter is 5.2. Now we'll look out for the ammeter. The corresponding ammeter reading is 40 milliampere. Now I try to increase the voltage in the voltmeter, but it remains constant at 5.2, but the current is increasing. Now it has increased to 60 milliampere, now to 70, 80, and so on. So when the voltage remains at 5.2, the milliampere increases from lower value to a higher value. Now coming to the observation column, initial reading of voltage was zero, current was zero, and this went up to 4.6, 4.6 volt, current was zero milliampere, and so the resistance was calculated as V by I as infinity. And here, when the voltage became, became 5 volt, the reading we got for the current is 20 milliampere. So V by I is 250 ohms. Then thereafter, when the voltage became 5.2, the current started to increase steadily, but the voltage remained at 5.2. This shows that the Zener is having a breakdown region of 5.2 volt and thereafter the voltage will remain constant and when you try to increase the voltage it will only result in the increase of current. So thereby you can see that the resistance correspondingly starts to decrease as the current increases. This can be plotted onto a graph also. In this experiment we have applied the reverse bias voltage and hence we can plot the voltage in the negative axis and the corresponding current is a negative current and we are plotted in the minus y direction. So in this quadrant of the graph, voltage is negative and the current is negative. The observations showed that up to a voltage of 5.2 volt or up to a voltage of 5, the current was zero. So the graph would look like this over here and at 5.1 and 5.2, the current started to increase and it suddenly increased to a high value at a, for a constant voltage of 5.2. So this sharp voltage 5.2 is known as the Zener breakdown voltage. It is a voltage at which the current starts to increase at a fast rate at in a steady manner. So we have drawn the characteristic graph for a reverse biased Zener diode and the breakdown voltage is evaluated from the graph as 5.2 volt. Now you might think what if the Zener diode is forward biased that is I give a voltage in the in this direction. You may uh, you have the permission to do it in that way also then you will get the Symbol diode characteristics of a semiconductor diode in when the Zener diode is forward biased. But the interesting point of the Zener diode is in the reverse bias. So we have drawn the characteristic for the reverse bias and you can interpret that the steady voltage that it keeps across the junction will make it get an application as a voltage regulator in various situations.